Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Logan with CigarFederation.com. We are here, live, Cigar Chat, episode 90, with Cigar Coop. And Rob's not here. Yay! So I've got my favorite Canadian, Surgeon. What's happening, brother? What's going on, Fitheads? Welcome to another Cigar Chat. I'm going to try and keep this show on track because uh, Logan's not operating a lot of sleep tonight. So, uh, you know, we're going to keep this non-cussing for a 45-minute segment. Trying to keep it on topic, trying to keep it moving forward, and uh, hopefully no no rage fits. Uh, hopefully not. I hopefully got it all out on uh, before camera. But yeah, the baby running me ragged. I'm telling you, like crying. She's, I mean, she's a little piggy. Like literally, like just eats so much formula and milk. It's just, I don't even understand. Like it's just absurd. But anyways, that's not why we're here. We're here for one reason, and it's a talk to my main man, William Cooper, Cigar Coop. Of cigarcoop.com. What's happening, Coop? Hey, Logan. Hey, Surgeon. How you doing? Congratulations, Logan. By the way, I'll Thank say you. it publicly. Yep. Thank you, man. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Wait till they be. Uh, wait till they turn 22, like my uncle. This is. I can't believe <laughs> you have crap. kids. Oh, it's nuts. You don't even. Look, you don't look a day over 20, Coop. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so, but yeah. So, well, Coop, we're doing we're doing something a little bit different tonight. Um, Coop's a good friend of ours. He, if you, for the eyes of good, don't know. Coop's been around. I like to call him the Cal Ripken of cigars uh, for two reasons. One, because if you know anything about baseball, which hopefully you do, is Cal Ripken has the longest consecutive streak. I don't know how many games because I don't really care. But the longest consecutive streak of playing in consecutive games without taking a day off or getting hurt or injured. Uh, and Coop has kind of done that with his site, CigarCoop.com, if you haven't checked it out before. How long are you on right now? How many days? Um... A little over 760. I actually uh, probably am a little off the count, but uh, it was uh, it's been consecutive since July 3rd, 2012. And that's oh, publishing some original content every single day. No holidays off. There's no rest for the coop. No, uh, no rest. Uh, no rest. Through, through 24/7, 365 day your coverage. Can we call you the hardest working cigar media guy in the biz, or what? Um, you know, there's a lot of hard working cigar media guys out there. So it's 772, actually. 772. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, let's just say that we don't do that on Cigar Federation. We, 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 that's just too tough. We, we just kind of ham it up over here. And then we have too off. much ADHD. We do. Here. We do. I'm too busy wrangling in people about coffee and Connie reviews to even get anything done around here. But Coop's also a part of um, the Stogie Geeks, which is a broadcast on Cigar Federation as well, with Paul, who I love his last name, Asadorian. And then the other guy that doesn't really talk that much. Mark Jr. Mark Jr., there you go. And Stogie Santa. Oh, yeah, Stogie Santa. I saw him at the trade show. I didn't say hi because he was busy the whole time. Yeah, he was actually working for Ocean State Cigars, so he was not on media detail for the most part. Uh, a lot of behind-the-scenes work those guys do to kind of help you know, if there's a streak out there, it's because I have some help in the background, and it may seem like uh, Coop has the numbers, but there's a lot what those guys do, and I'm real grateful for that. Exactly. I mean, I'd say the same thing about our mod team is that, you know, yeah, I own it, yeah, whatever, but behind the scenes, I mean, you know, our guys do a lot, doing reviews, getting reviews set up, so absolutely. Yeah, that so, means that mod, mod stipend's going up, chit -ching. Yeah, your, your mod stipend's going up from zero to zero. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, Coop, we've got you on. You're a little bit different because normally we only have manufacturers on. We wanted to have Coop on and kind of mix it up a little bit tonight for our 90th episode. Coop, let's just we're just going to kind of open it up and just kind of free flow and go. Let's start with IPCPR. I know you went to the trade show. The whole Cigar Federation team went to the trade show. What is something that surprised you about the trade show this year in compared to years past? Um, I guess I was surprised right out of the gate. I knew that San Andreas was going to be a big factor. I didn't expect to come out of the trade show with a strong amount of Maduro cigars. And I haven't seen the Maduro, I mean strong meaning a lot of good quality Maduros. Okay. That I just kind of came out of it saying, wow, Maduro, Maduro, Maduro. And, and yet yeah, it was a lot of San Andreas, but there was a lot of good Connecticut Broadleafs. There was some Nicaragua Maduros. So I was real, real surprised about that, because I think it's been down years for Maduro as the past few trade shows. I, yeah, I would agree. I mean, I think Maduro, I mean, there's I mean, there's ebbs and flows in the industry, like, you know, Ecuadorian, Connecticut, 
a few, maybe two years ago, a year ago, yeah. Ecuador and Sumatra, you know, this whole KFC thing. And and then now I'm, I've definitely noticed, but i got to think a part of the, the downward spiral, not, not downward spiral, but, dude, Connecticut Broadleaf is freaking expensive. That's and I'm not going to tell you what a pound is, but, like, it's, like, doubled since the beginning of the year. So, like, I don't even know how people make a cigar that's even profitable with, with sand, yeah. with, it's just such an expensive leaf. It's ridiculous. I, anyway, I, I totally agree on that. So, anyways, there's my rant about Connecticut Broadleaf. So, <laughs> Surgeon, and then Coop, I want you to follow up. At, at the show, what which manufacturer did you go up to that just kind of blew your socks off, like in terms of maybe the quality of their booth or something that went up that just like you're kind of at a booth, what was your most kind of... Oh my God! Like the moment you'll remember. And you're you're directing that to me. Well, I want you to answer first, conscious Canadian, then Coop. You know, because uh, a lot of people probably out there realize this is my first IPCPR, and uh, the mod team sort of said, for whatever you think you're in you're in store for, you're not prepared. When you get on the floor, you're gonna be blown away. And they were absolutely right. When I stepped out on the floor, this thing is 13 acres, 13 square acres. I've been on trade floors before. I mean, I work in oil and gas. I've seen trade floors. This thing was unreal. Um, the, the first three that sort of come to mind are the warp booth. Uh, I think we've been on this sort of warp tangent for the last few weeks, talking about the cigars, talking about the products. Their booth was tight. It was interesting. Um, I think I sort of called them a, a new wave boutique in that um, it seems like a lot of these boutique companies are sort of, and this isn't to take away from them because I think they've done a great job of being strong boutique companies, but they're sort of becoming uh, less boutique and more mainstream, and that's not to take away from their products, but, um, you know, they're not they're less small, they're more, they're more profitable, they're doing better, they're releasing more cigars, and Warp seems like the new generation boutique, um, and we saw a few of those, but Warp sort of initially stood out in my mind. Um, I'm going to throw a wild card out there and say the general booth of all places, I wasn't I mean, I, I, I go to Cuba, so I, I have a bit of a take on uh, some of the Cuban branding. Um, I wasn't really expecting much out of the general booth, and honestly, it blew me away. The entire thing was was staged well, was lit well. Um, I loved their product on display. It was interesting. I think we got some, some of our best videos from the general booth. And uh, I can't go a segment without talking about the Drew Estate booth because that, that was friggin' unreal, man. They, they, had, they had a bridge replica and they're yeah. blasting hip hop and like like everywhere you turned it was it was Drew Estate, Drew Estate, Drew Estate. Um, and for a company who, you know, certainly saturates the market pretty pretty well with their products and their images and their awesome stuff, um, they they took it up a notch for the show. So um, I think that would be my three takeaways. What what about you, Coop? I mean you you've got the experience. This is this is, you know, almost becoming old hat for you. Right, right. No, and I appreciate that. And by the way, I, I'm gonna. We're in sync on warp cigars. Um, I actually was doing some Why? coverage on them. Why? Uh, the product is good. That no. Masculina is a great cigar, Logan. <laughs> no. You get yes. overruled, brother. Uh, I know you're the yes. NFNCO, but you're everyone is like so. I mean, I like the uh, Kyle. He was cool. Don't get me wrong. But uh -huh. dude, like, eh, it's I, like whatever. I smoked it before the show and reviewed it before the show, so I kind of knew going in. I haven't smoked the uh, the Casa Fernandez blend yet, but I, I do agree. I like the, the setup of that booth, and, and Kyle really went in uh, for a new guy. He didn't just go in with a table and a banner in the background. So he lit um, it up. But, but the one that really stood out to me was Illusioni. Now I've been going to the show for a long time, and I've seen Dion's booths. And the last few years, Dion hasn't displayed product. Uh, this year, Dion came in. And he had a booth connected with Casa Fernandez, which I thought, which is kind of a trend you're starting to see at the show. Oh, yeah. but companies that work close together now are starting to kind of bunk up together. But Dion had had a really nice booth. The product was on display. And Dion's always been a tough guy to get time with at the show because he does have retail responsibilities and walks the floor. But uh, Dion couldn't have been nicer with his time um, and taking me through the products and answering questions. And so that was really, I think, the big, when I went into that booth, that was a major improvement to what I've seen over the past couple of years, you know, just from the, the, the setup and the experience. Uh, the Davidoff booth is always uh, 
a class. It's it's really similar to the general booth where it's like a trade show within a trade show. Yeah, it is. So you know, there's um there's different rooms and different areas, and it's almost like they have their own little trade show. But the Davido booth is really really set up cool, and they they have different areas. Avo's got his area. Camacho's got their area. A room 101. Uh, I saw Logan. I think he was sitting in Booth's throne. I was, man. Yeah. yeah. You got a picture then? Oh, we did. It was it was interesting because Booth came in a little little under the weather, and we were there. And I'll tell the story. There was a retailer there, and you know we were obviously very respectful of of his time. You know, I mean, retailers were there to buy cigars. We're there to interview. I, I totally get the dynamic. And this retailer was giving Booth hell. Like, we thought and I'm he was like, joking at first. And I thought he was joking. And I was like, okay, dude, we'll come back. He's like, no, you stay. And he was like, just antagonizing this guy. And it was some of the funniest shit. Ah, oh, dang it. Anyways, some of the I'll cut that out. So one of the funniest stuff I've seen, and <laughs> it was it was great. I mean, uh, Booth is is the man. I, I I need to get him on cigar chat. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, yeah well, you'll have a good time with that. Expect the unexpected. <laughs> hey, I well, want to I mean. reiterate how cool he was with his time. I mean, <clears throat> he you know he really. He, because, you know, again, what Logan was saying, and I'm sure this is true for you, Coop, and everybody there is his media, we're trying to be respectful. We understand they're trying to conduct business, so we're doing our very best to stay out of the way and, and just take up that gap where we can get it. And uh, Matt was, like, all about breaking out a segment for us, taking the time to sit down, really focus on us, and uh, super cool dude. I call him the, um, he was he was like Iron Man, you know, like, he just he had the he, he was dressed to the nines, super cool guy, super chill. Uh, I felt like I could have you know gone out and drank some rum with him after the show and had a good time. He just seemed super cool guy. Yeah, he's absolutely. Cool. He's a cool fella. I, I you know, let me say this about Warped, and I'm just gonna say it for the <laughs> record here, is I knew the second that Rob was jazzed about it, it just means I because we're the antithesis of each other, right? Like I know I'm gonna it's hate true, it. Man, yin and yang. And I and you're right. It is a very interesting point, Kuba. You said because his booth was not a first year presenter booth at all. No, like no. it was, it he was well done. And he didn't what? carry himself like a first year presenter either. I mean, he carried himself like that was his third year at the show. I mean, yeah. what's his background like? I mean, is he backed by anyone? I know he's working at Altani Bronze, but is he backed by anyone? Does he have a retailer background? What's his What's his story? He's 25 years old, from what I know. Wow. He was pretty really? Like, doing some of this. He, it's not a new company. The company's been around since he's been in college, and he's done a few other blends in the past, and he was working with, from what I understand, some other factories in Miami, but um, at this point now, he's, I guess he's out of college, and he's kind of guns a-blazing right now, so he's set up relationships with El Titan de Bronze and um, Casa Fernandez, um, and, and Sandy from El Titan de Bronze had actually um, given me his contact information back in February. So I was starting to talk to him, and, and, and you know, we're talking, and every few weeks he's telling me, I got this coming out of the show, I got this coming out of the show. And for a small, you know, basically one-man company, you know, I was real surprised um, um, how much he had coming out. When he actually got to the show and I saw that booth, uh, it was, I mean, that booth was first class. So I would agree. Yeah. I mean, do you think the La Colina is too La Polina-ish, like well, a Mr. Sam? In terms of the marketing? No, what a, not, what a blend. maybe the marketing, maybe the blend itself. I, I smoked it, and I was just kind of like, you know, this is, and I didn't like the Mr. Sam. I'll you got any of that Lajero? Yeah, I didn't have any enough Lajero, but it, it's reminiscent of a of a Mr. Sam, at least to me. Maybe I'm wrong, but I've smoked the uh, the IPCPR one, which is the one I've smoked, which has a little stinger at the bottom, mm -hmm. and that, and he told me that blend's slightly different than the regular La Colmina. And okay. I just love that sort of sweetness that came out of that cigar. A lot more sweetness from that cigar than I did from a Mr. Sam. Okay. Maybe that's not the one I smoked. Or maybe I'm just tired and I don't know. But with that, everyone, we're going to pause for a five-second break. And we'll be back to uh, Armed Forces Radio Network back in a sec. Hey, everyone. This is Logan, Cigar Federation. We're back in action from our break. Just want to thank everyone on Armed Forces Radio Network for listening out there. Appreciate your service and listening to this sideshow of nonsense. So we're here with Coop. We're here with my favorite conscious Canadian. Next topic. Coop, what's the best cigar you have smoked out of the trade show thus far? I would say right now the uh, Casa Fernandez Anniversario 2014. Interesting. I know. You and, you and Seth were talking about that. Like, I mean, I smoked one last year, and... 
and I make these like wild, not accus accusations, but these wild comparisons between cigars. And for me, like it, it was definitely. I mean, it was it was a good cigar, but it just kind of remind it reminded me of, like the Blessed Leaf a little bit. And how was it different compared to last year's anniversario? And how can they have an anniversario on their thirty sixth anniversary anniversary, which is not even really at their thirty fifth? But we won't get into that. We won't well, do 30, that. The, 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 I want, I'm not going to try to figure out the math, but um, this year's blend is a little amped up more, so it's going to have a little more strength. I also felt that the cigar had a little more in, in terms of flavor transitions and complexity. Um, it had a lot of like nice cinnamon and baker's spice notes. Um, very smooth cigar. It just performed flawlessly. Now, I be, with that 35th cigar last year, I became... That cigar really grew on me, and as it aged, it got better and better. Um, the, 30, the anniversary of 2014, which is the 36th, so to speak, um, was much better out of the gate, and it had a little more in terms of, of strengths. Um, okay. And I know I've been talking a lot about Maduro, but that cigar is right now. The, and I haven't smoked everything from the show yet, but that one, I'd say, stands out. Uh, it's, a, it's a top cigar. Um, the other one, and I'll, I'll just, you know, a lot of folks know that Debonair sponsors our show, but the Debonair Maduro. It was good. Um, it, I really liked it. Um, it was one of the better Maduros I had, and I tell people, you know, smoke it for yourself and make your own decision on that. Yeah, I had the, when I was sitting there with you and Phil Zangi, I had the, I don't think it was a Corona, but maybe a Corona Gorda or whatever. The Sagita. Sort of you had the yeah. Sagita. Mm -hmm. It was, I mean, and it was on a fairly nuked palate, and it, I mean, it was it was bomb. Like, I mean, it was definitely good stuff. Um, I mean, definitely going to be reviewing that. Okay, so those two. Surgeon, what about you, when you're on Master? What, what about me? What well, on you? Uh, all right, well, everyone knows that I have a very niche palate. And, well, I wouldn't say well, but a very, very defined scope of what I like. And there, there's been, honestly, most of the things out of the trade show, um, and obviously, you know, <laughs> I mean, we, we get, you know, we have samples and stuff like that to review and stuff, which we'll be doing. But, you know, in terms of this, I mean, we, we kind of review, not I wouldn't say the, the best stuff first, but we review, you know, what everyone's talking about. And, you know, we fall into that trap like everyone else. And, I mean, I've smoked a lot of cigars you know, out of the show so far that, I mean, there hasn't really been a bad one out of the lot, at least that I've smoked. I mean, the Roma Craft Neanderthal blew me away. I mean, I was down in Nicaragua earlier this year with Skip and spent a week that I'll never get back, unfortunately, because uh, it was not, uh, it was a very interesting trip. But he was rolling, I mean, they had just kind of finalized the blend, and I don't know if it was tweaked or whatever. Um, I mean, at that time, there was actually still two different Batolas that he was planning on producing, and he actually narrowed it down to one. And he he went with the one I told the one I told him to pick. He went with a different one, but I guess that doesn't matter. But um, I, I really enjoy that cigar because there's there's a lot. I mean, I think there's another trend of there's a lot of kind of blow you out of the water and strength wise cigars. Uh, and I'm going to be reviewing one tomorrow that was kind of I won't spoil the fun, but was actually hell I'll spoil the fun. The Emilio Cape Noctum or Noctum, however you say it. Like for me, strength. I love strong cigars, but I don't like strength with sacrificing flavor. And in my review tomorrow, I talk about, it's kind of like, you remember when back in the day when you were young and cool, like when you're out hanging with your buddies and you were sitting in lawn chairs or out by a pool or doing whatever and you were drinking beer, and then you, you, that's back before your bladder was too small and you didn't have to piss after every beer, and you could hold five or six beers before you had to pee, and then you stand up and you're like, holy crap, like I got, I'm kind of drunk. Like that's, when it comes to strength, what I like, where it's, it's not just plummeting. It's not like drinking straight like gin or something. Like it, it's gradual. It's part of the experience. You're enjoying it, and then when you like realize, you're like, "Holy crap! This is a really strong cigar." Um, and, and that's what I felt about the Roma Craft. Not so much the Carpe Noctum. Um, you know, I really enjoy the Surrogates Cracker Crumbs. I did not like the Animal Cracker. I, it was another one of those way too strong cigars. Not enough flavor for me. And the Cracker Crumbs were legit. Like I will definitely, even though I have an indoor smoking room now. Like will be a thing, a commuter cigar. I mean, I absolutely dug that. They gotta release that in a Corona or a Corona Extra. If they did in a different Batola, I think it, it would do amazing. It's a great blend. It's just too big in that six by sixty in the Animal Cracker. I thought it lost a lot of strength the Animal Cracker over time. Really? I I think it really can't. I think the strength really evaporated on it. Not that it's a weak cigar, but it. 
I mean, I can find much. If you let that sit in your humidor for three or four months, go back to it. I think you'll you'll be surprised. I smoked it. I want to say like maybe November. I picked it up when I was in Lubbock visiting the family for Thanksgiving, and I smoked it. And I got it from uh, Good Karma Cigar, and it was still strong. I need to buy a couple more and revisit, but I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of cracker crumbs now. I'm all about it, Serge. What about you, though? Well, you know it's weird, man, because I'm all over this. I'm over the flavor map with. I mean, I love me some triple arrow. Um, you know, like I love, and and I'm gonna have to try that Neanderthal because I looked through my uh, collection and I do have it, which I'm super excited to try because you know I live at the deep end of the spectrum, and I was just looking over my top list for the 2014. I have got so many Dominican cigars in my top ten. I don't even know how that happened because big, big year. It's a big year, and you know, no. like. I don't mean to bust on Dominican cigars because they make some really good cigars, but for the most part, I find Dominican cigars a little too subtle for my palate. And like the top cigars right now sitting on my list are Dominican. Um, now, with that said, some and I, like same with you, Coop. I mean, there's so many new products from the IPCPR, and I'm I'm the great thing about coming out of the IPCPR is there's so many things I want to try, and it's not that I'm rushing through it. It's just there doesn't seem to be enough time in the in the week to enjoy everything. So with that said, the leader right now for me is the Jericho Hill. And I've had crown heads. Um, the uh, drumstick is sitting, uh, is sitting number one on my list right now. Um, the, the Jericho Hill, um, for me, it, it's, it's like this combination of um, it's really complex. It's, it's, uh, it's got strength, like you said, without just being strength for strength's sake. Um, it's balanced. But right on the heels of it, and it was really tough for me in the rating. This is one of the toughest ratings for me because I love uh, Eddie Ortega's stuff. I, like, I absolutely love his stuff, and I feel like when I look at the media, it seems like his stuff doesn't get enough, um, I don't want to say hype, but it doesn't get enough attention because I love his cigars. Like, they're, they're just they're killer to me. Um, so the Ortega Black um, came out and, like, it was. I had to go back and forth between the Jericho Hill and the Ortega Black, and in the end, it was like literally a half point separating the two. Um, you know, between one leading, winning, and the so it went Jericho Hill, and then just subtly number two, the Ortega Black for me. And it was it was a tough call. What did you think of the Ortega Black, Coop? I had it at the show. I thought it was good. I thought it was a good cigar. Um, it was a little hard. My palate was a little shot when I had it. Um, my initial thing is I liked it better than the uh, Siri D Natural. Um, okay. I think it needed a little more time. My yeah. gut told me it needed a little more rest, time. Yeah. But but I would agree with Sir. I think the potential is there with that blend. I think if you come back to, I'm going to come back to the Ortega Black in a couple months, yeah. and I would not be surprised to see that Ortega Black land in the top five for me for the year. Whoa, bold. Bold prediction. Yeah, Bold I don't know prediction. if I had it that high. I don't know if I had it that high based on what I had at the show, but it wasn't. It was. It was a good cigar. I, I did enjoy it. What do you think? What do you think, Coop, is going to come out for you? Because you know we're kind of getting in the last. We're, we're almost done the quarter three here. We're getting in the quarter four. Um, what do you think for you? And this is bold prediction time. Is going to land in the top ten. You know, maybe some stuff you haven't smoked. Maybe some stuff you have smoked. What do you think is going to land in the top ten for you? What do you think is the wild card for you for the year? Um, right now, I would say the, the leader in the clubhouse is the Casada 40th Anniversary Corona Classica. Um, so that is not the San Andreas blend. That is the a limited edition that was done. I think that's right now the highest cigar I've scored. It's, it's definitely the leader. The, the Casa Fernandez 35th, which I'm kind of going to still count as because it was released very late last year, has really been a very, very good cigar. Um, now, there's a couple of wild cards that I'm seeing could really... One cigar that I'm really liking, but I need to kind of study it a little more and smoke it a little more, and no one's talking about it, is La Aurora Untamed. Really? Yeah, which I haven't heard a lot of people talk about. Um, that cigar's got a lot of potential right now, um, where I could, let, you know, I could see that uh, being very high on my list uh, once the year comes out. Really? I mean, I haven't I haven't smoked La Aurora. I mean, I, I, you know, it, it's hard for me. You know, I think you like loud. it, Logan. I, I think, think I like it. One you like? Really? I'm gonna have to track it down then. Um, I mean, it, it's got some firepower. Really? Okay. 
I'm going to yeah. try it out now based on your recommendation. For me, I mean, I don't know. I mean, there's still so much stuff that it is set to come out that didn't get the trade show. That, you know, I'm still I'm still pretty pumped about. Like, you know, right now, I, I will say, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to have to go back and really play with it. The only thing I know I'm going to do with my reviews this year, and, and I think... And I, and I would actually implore most media people to do this. Um, and, I, and I think it's, it's it's a very interesting dynamic, and I've had a lot of conversations with this about um, with a couple of manufacturers. They always, and I'm not going to say who, but as, as media, we always are saying like, well, you know, what's the newest thing? What was the best cigars for this year? And, and that's the way we mostly do it, because we want to know what's new, what's hot, and whatever. And then there's brands out there that, and I think it's a, it's a good strategy, don't put something out necessarily every year. They'll do line extensions. They'll do different batolas. They'll do a store exclusive or something where they're still keeping interest, but they kind of remain on their kind of core line, right? Their core lines, and they just kind of expand it. I mean, take Padron, for example, and the, just the Padron series, the classics, right? How many different batolas? Like, it's like 30 or something ridiculous. And I'm going to do two lists. I'm going to do my top cigars released during 2013, but I'm also going to do which brands that I buy and smoke the most of during 2014. Because I think there's a difference. I mean, I'll tell you right now, the Ortega Series D Maduro would not be on my top ten list, or because it's not new, but I've, I've bought probably three or four boxes this year. Yeah, so I go through those like crazy. I go through them like crazy. Um, so I'm going to definitely take that approach. But, I mean, I'll tell you two cigars that will make my top ten list this year. It will be one, will be definitely the Roma Craft Neanderthal, but the other one, that I've been smoking. I just got a box the other day. I had one. I think I can't remember who sent me the first one. I maybe it was Seth or something. And I remember Coop and you guys talking about it. But it was the this little bugger? The unleaded. Dude, holy crap! Viaje, like I love. I, first of all, got to actually sit down with Trach. I love the guy. Very super cool. Andre's awesome. Andre's a great guy. And he he's a very for me like it's a very interesting business model because. Most people create, you know, they have limited editions, they have their core lines, but they have limited editions. Everything he does is a limited edition, right, more or less. I mean, it's small, small, batch. Batch, small batch production. He uses several different factories. And I feel, you know, a couple years ago, Viaje was super hot. And then, you know, last year I smoked the C4, hated it. TNT, hated it. And, I mean, I just did. I, I reviewed it. Go check it out. Uh, yeah, I didn't like it. It just wasn't for me. It wasn't nearly as good as the previous releases. But I feel like definitely on the upswing. I mean, with the leaded, the new Satori, I haven't smoked the was a collaboration and the, the cachet yet. But I think he's definitely on the upswing. And if you get your chance to get on the leaded, holy crap. It's yep. amazing. Yeah, yep. and yep, I agree. And with that, I think we're going to take our second break here, Logan. Are we really? Mm -hmm. I set my timer? Oh, yeah, well, let's just go ahead and do that. So with that, my conscious Canadian friend, we will come back here after a five-second radio silence. Hey, everyone, we're back. Cigar Chat on CigarFederation.com. Thank you for listening on Armed Forces Radio Network, protecting us um, around the world. We appreciate your service. So we're here with my conscious Canadian friend, and we're well with Cigar Coop. We're talking about our favorite cigars. We're talking about, you know, IPCPR. So let's 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 take another topic here in kind of our last segment. There's been a lot of people, and I wouldn't call it a max a mass exodus from the industry, but I feel like in the last probably month month and a half, people have been leaving companies and jumping ship and going to other companies. Of all these moves that have happened, which one Coop surprised you the most? I would still say that the one that surprised me the most was was um, was the Grace move. And, I agree, hundred yeah. percent. And, and, and the Grace move I saw as a surprise because it's seeming like if you start reading between the lines, Christian's changing the model of the company, moving away from these. It seems like he's going to be moving. To, and I don't have any information, but it seems like he's moving things more towards CLE and Asylum. I think so. I mean, yeah. Winwood left, was that two years ago? A year ago? Last year. Last, Last year. Last year. And then Grace. I mean, it, it, I don't know. I mean, how many I mean, uh, how many Nicaraguan puros can you put out? You know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't know if it's condensation or what it is. They launched a cigar at the show. They, they what? 
they launched a new uh, Hedge Terror at the show. That's what kind of caught you off guard. It did. You know, last year you could say when Jose Blanco left Toyota in Nicaragua, he didn't go into the show with really anything new. No. So, you know, that was a little less of his fight, but, but they actually launched something, and now she's gone. I'm going to say this. There's a lot of things that – there's going to be more announcements over the next few weeks. Just, just oh, be, no. Just be breaking ready. Breaking news. Hashtag there's, breaking news. Yeah. More, yeah, there's going to be more coming. So this is not the, not the first – there's been a wave of them over the past few weeks. Um, yeah, no, what do you, I – What do you attribute that to? Yeah, I was going to ask. What do you think? Can you tie that down to one thing? Is there something different about 2014, or is this just the seasonality? I think it's I think I think what you're seeing now is it's a it's a numbers game. And you know, there's a point where you gotta make money. Yeah. So do you do you think that make ties money. back to people talking about how this show was in terms of traffic versus previous years, or what was your take on that? I just think it's overall sales. I think it's overall sales, you know. So if you know you know People, you know, why, you know, in the corporate, I'm going to put my corporate hat on, you know, people are moved out of jobs primarily because the numbers aren't there. And I would just say probably there's brands that aren't making money that people expected to make money, and companies are now making changes because of that. Yeah. And I don't know how well, I don't know how well uh, Hedge Sarah was doing for CLE, um, but, you know, wasn't, wasn't total, I mean, I was totally surprised still because it seemed like that that was a partnership that was going to be around for a while. I, I would have agreed. I mean, I think Grace's for me was very shocking because one, I mean, she obviously released the cigar, you know, and it's one of those things that you know. And I, I've know there's a couple like you've alluded to that I, or we, we probably know the same people that you know that are going to be doing these moves. But um, you know, it's not something that happens overnight unless you have a complete falling out, right? Where you know there's a little bit of time and effort put into the separation, how it's handled in the media, you know how how the brands are transitioned and all that, and it, it was, seems like it was very quick. Um, so I don't I don't know if it's a thing. I mean I wish Grace the best of luck, but I'm just kind of like wow. I mean you spent this time building this brand, you've got Christian behind you, but then all of a sudden it's like you launch a cigar and it's gone. So I don't know. Yeah. When we had Grace on Cigar Chat. She was like I don't even know if we're gonna have a new cigar. So Maybe that should have been a tip off. I don't know. Uh, maybe they rushed. I don't really know. But um, yeah, I just I found that one very surprising. Yeah, and then Justin from Lou Rod, Justin Andrews, who yeah. resigned from Lou Rodriguez Cigars, that's that still was a bit of a surprise for me because it seemed like Lou Rod was going the other way with Justin and kind of put more more into him, investing more into him and giving him more autonomy. So that one kind of surprised me second. Mine, I mean, with me, I mean, I, I talked to Justin the other day, and, yeah, I was very surprised about Justin, but the one that kind of it, it shocked me is all, all the departures from A.J. Fernandez. And I, I know Spencer Drake, you know, pretty well. I mean, he lives in Houston. I see him quite a bit. But I was very surprised that this mass exodus, and, I mean, Nate McIntyre, too, to Kivanacon. I mean, frankly, and I'll be straight up, is that until this trade show, I would say probably 75% of the cigar smokers in the world have never heard of Cubanicon. And all of a sudden, it's like, holy crap, we got Hiroshi Urbana. We're picking up all these people. Like, And I don't know if they're like, they're awoke a sleeping dragon or what, but, I mean, it's like they're on the map now. And, and that seems crazy to me to go from that to Cubanicon. I don't know. I just find it kind of strange. Yeah, I mean, well, you know, I talked to the Cubana. I spent some time in the Cubanicon booth, and... If they've had to make, if they they had to bring some people in for this Orochi thing, there's no question. They needed to kind of really streamline their operations here. I think with Spencer and Nathan, they have two really good guys. Agreed. Um, I think I think the Southeast needed some attention right now with Kubanacon, and I think it was a smart move giving Nathan the East, being from the Southeast, and let him handle it because there's been a little bit, of, I'd say, a little bit of turmoil with the Kubanacon brand in the Southeast, and I think some retailers need to feel a little love right now. So. It was, it was. I think it was a good move. So yeah. switching, switching it up. What are you, what are you looking forward to, Coop? After, after the show being in Vegas for a few years, what are you looking forward to? Because the show is shifting to New Orleans next year. What are you looking forward to in New Orleans? What are you hoping that's going to change in New Orleans? Um, I'm hoping what stays. I'm hoping that we continue the positive path we've had with 
media being made to feel welcome at the show, and I felt media was made to feel welcome. So I think I, if we can I continue agree. that direction, yeah. you agree. You I guys agree, right? Hundred yeah, percent, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, for all you know, and I've never had problems per se. There's been people that said there's problems with the media. Um, just follow the rules and just kind of communicate, and we'll be all right. Like, so I think that was a positive um, thing. Um, I kind of am looking forward from a personal standpoint of not having to get on a plane because I'm going to drive to New Orleans um, <laughs> instead. I, I really don't like to fly, so that part I'm kind of uh, looking forward to. I'm looking forward to supposedly the vape and e-cigarette stuff's going to be separated next year. It is. They're going to have yeah. vape town. It's going to be awesome. Vape town. Yeah. It, it needs to be. It and does. I'm not saying they don't belong at the show. It just needs to be separate. There's a different vibe and feel for that end of the show than the cigar show. Yeah, but they, have, they have pretty people at the booth, so, Coop. I mean, you know, that's got to be a huge draw. Well, you know what I always say, though? The better looking at the the better looking at the booths, usually, not always, the products are not as good quality. It's true. It's true. I mean, yeah. it's very true. I mean, I, I it, it logistically, it would just make everything easier to find because, you know, I mean, I have no problem with hookah or e-cigarette. I don't have any problem with that crap. I don't like it, but I don't have a problem with it. The same um, thing with Yeah. I don't have a problem, but it just, it was very difficult for me to be able to say, oh, let's go to Lou Rod's booth, and it's literally... In like all these crazy vape places, and I can't, I couldn't, even, I literally could not find the booth for four days. And well, the funny, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're right. So, or they're walking I mean, the aisle soliciting. I mean, it was almost like panhandling, um, where the cigar people weren't panhandling, trying to get you to try products in the aisles. And I, oh, it's, no. it's a different vibe. Maybe that's what they do in Vape Town, but it's a different vibe in, in the cigar end of things. I would absolutely agree. I mean, I'm I'm a little curious because I mean I've been to Orlando and then uh, Vegas twice. I, I'm curious to see because I've been to New Orleans. I think I went last year for a couple days for work, and I love New Orleans as a city. I mean, it's it's a party city, obviously, like Vegas. So I don't think you lose that. I guess I'm a little I'm a little interested to see how the I don't know where the convention's going to be exactly. I'm sure there's a convention center, but there's yeah. not the lodging necessarily that there is in Vegas where you've got strips of hotels, right? Like, I'm curious how, and not the taxi services that they have in Vegas either. So I'm curious just logistically to see how that's going to work. Yeah, and actually, I've been to the one in New Orleans in 2010, and that was the first year I went. Everything's much more spread out. There is a Harris um, Casino and Hotel right across the street. I think there's a Marriott. But what you don't have is you don't have that Venetian Palazzo, which really for the past, uh, you know, last couple years has been kind of this place where everyone convenes after sure. the show. It's, it's sure. small friendly. Um, so it's going to be only a little more like Orlando where things are going to be spread out. Um, and, you know, the idea of the difference is you're not going to be able to, uh, you're going to have to now go walk or take cabs. Um, a lot of people are. I know some people did in Vegas, but you're going to have to walk or take cabs to the convention center. And it's very hot and sticky out there. Um, oh, right terrible. the Mississippi River. Um, so... I'm, I'm, I don't know how the dynamics gonna gonna work with that this year. I heard from talking to people in the FPR that it's gonna be smoke friendly, so we we are gonna be able to smoke in places. Um, so that was encouraging to hear, uh, but we'll see. Yeah, absolutely, we'll see. So you know, let let me ask you this. So where I mean, and Coop, I know you're much more tied in with the the FDA. I mean, as of, I think it was two, three days ago, the comment period ended um, to comment on the FDA deeming document. Now we're kind of in just kind of a holding pattern, waiting waiting out. What do you what do you think is going to happen? On the next announcement we get, what do you think is going to happen? I think what's going to happen is there's going to be some regulations put in place. Um to the ex I mean, it's so I don't think there's going to be a, the exemption the way we want it. So I think there'll be, but I think it may be something in between total regulation and and an option two. I mean, I don't. But here's the thing: I think that's what I definitely feel will happen. Whatever is announced, it's going to go to the courts. You I believe think so? that this. I think this will go to court. So I think it's going to be about six months before we. Uh, if we hear something before the end of the year, I'll be a little surprised. I'll be honest with you. But I think once that happens, I think the lawyers are, all, are going to be all over this, and this thing's going to be headed to court. So I think it's going to be – we're not going to see light at the end of the tunnel for a while. 
how much the CRA's lobbying efforts in Washington is going to be able to put pressure on the FDA between now and then. Um, you got to remember there's a new Congress coming into place next year, so it's going to it could be a new set of players next year as well. That's so true. The next, so there's going to be a big push, I think, in D.C. over the next the next few months, and and that's why it's you know hey you still got to join CRA, still support CRA because these efforts uh, are, are need to be funded still. Absolutely, and and I, and I'm no lawyer, but correct me if I'm wrong here. But if, for example, a ruling comes down and it is is taken to court, then as long as it's in court, nothing really changes until a, a final ruling is made. Correct, or am I wrong about that? I don't know the answer to that. My my guess would be that it'd have to be some sort of an injunction filed, right, to kind of say you can't do that until this right. is settled in court. Okay. So again, I'm I'm not a lawyer either, but that would be my my guess with that. So you know, with um, I mean, with a lot of the stuff that's came out, and I don't remember was it the House Appropriations Committee and the Agriculture Committee or whoever putting pressure on FDA. I mean, I mean, is there? Do you feel that there's enough support in Washington? And let me ask you this: scrap that question. In between option, option good and option bad, where? I mean, what do you think is going to happen? I mean, are you looking at a ten dollar price uh, arbitrary minimum? Are we looking at you know, closed humidors. I mean, where do you think? I mean, flavored cigars or infused cigars or whatever is that off the block? I mean, where do you think the middle ground is? Well, I think right now, for now, the flavored cigars and and the threat of walking humidors is tabled. Okay. But you got to keep in mind that they said is this is a foundational document. It's the first step for further regulation. And, and Google told us on Still Geeks that, that these things are, are, are real, real danger right now of still happening. I think there's gonna, I think ultimately the pressure that uh, tobacco-free kids and all these organizations are putting, they're gonna have to settle for some sort of a price point. Um, I'm just inclined to believe it's not gonna be the $10, it's not gonna be a realistic, the $10 point's not realistic. No. I mean, it's, it, that's just, but again, we're talking about Washington and the FDA here. Before we finish up here, I want to I want to sneak in an audience question because we haven't had a lot of audience questions. We have a good one here from Punch Nubbit, and it kind of goes back to what we we're talking about previously, which was attendance. And just want to get your Punch Nubbit wants to get your take on: uh, Did you think the attendance seemed down at the convention? And can you speculate on that? Like, what's your theory on why that would be? I think it was down. I think it was definitely down. Um, I don't have the empirical data to, to comment, but I, I mean, I've been to a few of these where it was it was a down. I've talked to a lot of retailers who didn't go, and particularly a lot out of the Northeast felt that given the show was in Vegas, that, um, and given that they had a um, a tough winter, they felt they needed to stay behind. Um, I talked to other retailers who also said, "Hey, I know what the show. I know what's coming out new already. Everyone said what's coming out new. I've seen photos online." Um, I could just make these orders when I get back, and oh yeah, I could take advantage of some show specials already. I'd be yeah. curious to see what the amount of sales were, combine it with the shows, and then combine it with the orders that people did outside the show, and see if the overall numbers were up. That that's the part I would look at, um, as opposed to you know if there's a if there's a booth that's really crowded, right? Now you could you guys know the booths that are crowded. Wouldn't yeah. they rather have some people make their orders outside the show just to kind of keep things flowing better? Um, uh, yeah. So that's the kind of. So I don't know what. I think that's the ultimate thing is how were those overall sales for this time of the year um, slotted in. But the foot traffic was down. I, I could tell. I, I believe that wholeheartedly. I want to make a real quick point, and then we're gonna we'll sign off of AFRN, and then we'll we'll head to our after dark episode. But on it, you know, I, Rob and I argued about this a bunch, and I was like, you know, the traffic is down. The traffic is down. There's not as many people. But I think it's also a function of the the convention had a whole nother side of it opened up. So it was literally 13 acres of floor space. And so even though I think there wasn't as many people there, but being more spread out, I really think it made it feel even even less crowded. That That's my take. I, I guess I'm agreeing with Rob for once in my life, but I think that had part to do with it. I do, but I did too. Speak to some booth people that said they definitely wrote less orders and it was definitely less foot traffic. That, there you that go. so I think I think that did weigh that did weigh into what you say, Logan. Too. There you, that's why we're friends with Coop. So if you guys <laughs> haven't checked it out, Coop, tell everyone where they can find you um, on the interwebs. Um, Cigar Coop www.cigar-coop.com 
And for the weekly podcast and everything going on at Stogie Geeks, it's www.stogiegeeks.com, uh, where we also have a ton of information from IPCPR on both sites. Awesome. Well, Surgeon, thank you for coming and hosting. Coop, appreciate the time as always. Thanks so, for the troops set again, too. Thanks, to everyone. No, absolutely. So next week, guys, we'll be coming back. Actually, no, excuse me. We'll be coming back with Epic Cigars. Um, this is actually this, this, Thursday. The, this coming Thursday. So appreciate <laughs> you. Thank you for everyone listening. Uh, thank you for all that you guys do, and we'll, we'll see you next week. And we're fucking back in the final segment where I can be an asshole to everyone. So, anyways, so we're done with AFRN. So, all right. So, I'm kind of out of questions. I, I feel like I've actually contained myself really good considering I'm running on like three hours of sleep. I've filled up and wiped up more baby spittle than anybody in America. <clears throat> um, so, Coop, let me ask you. Where do you, oh, well, let me rephrase this question is that with the show, I mean, we're going to talk about CMA for a second. Let's, I felt like you said, I think it was a it was a great point you said about, I, I felt totally welcome. I mean, every booth I went to um, was open arms. I mean, there, there was no access, or no access denied. I mean, it was absolutely great. I mean, how do you, within CMA, maybe take a second to explain what that actually is, and then kind of talk about what, kind of the thoughts were and people were saying about CMA? Um, so CMA is the uh, Cigar Meteor Association, and it was formed by a bunch of us, um, Logan being one of the members. And really what it, it was meant to improve the overall relationship between uh, cigar media and uh, the cigar industry. And really my, my, my look at it, and I've always said it, it's a business reason why I, I, I wanted to form this, namely... You know, a lot of businesses are investing in online media, but the cigar businesses just seem very resistant to it. And there's been a lot of reasons why that's happened. And I think ultimately it comes down to a relationship of trust with the online media um, and the media really taking themselves seriously. So that was, that was my impetus for performing it. Um, there are a bunch of people who will say it was formed to be a labor union for IPCPR, which it couldn't be further from the truth. Yep. Now, IPCPR is an important part to a lot of us who cover the media. We do need to be there. Um, we want to have IPCPR have a trusting relationship with the cigar media. Um, so we've tried to put some, some, some standards and ethics in place for how a lot of us would conduct ourselves at the trade show um, and just be professional So um, and make sure we follow the rules. And we didn't have to micromanage anybody this year. It was no. the people who, you know, the professionals who were there, really, I think, conducted themselves like professionals. Um, and even the people, I'll say this, even the, CM, the non-CMA members, they were very well professional. I heard of one complaint of someone, and that person's been a problem for a couple of years. So, and he was a non-CMA member. But otherwise, I mean, I think that's, you know, and I think ultimately... If you're going, this is where I'm going to get into a little bit of trouble, but I'll say it anyway. If you're going to the trade show and you have a website and you just want to go have fun there, I'm not sure if IPCPR is the place to go do that. No. And I think that's that's where you know if you're going to go to a tweet up or something for that. No, oh, I absolutely be, agree. Yeah. I, mean, I absolutely agree. I mean, first of all, the overall amount of media people that were down, which you know it. And I mean, I understand it, right? I mean, there's there's a finite number of booths. I can understand if I was Pete Johnson, I was getting hit up for an interview every 10 seconds. I, I can understand that. Like, you're trying to do business. I totally get that. Yeah. Um, but the overall amount of people, the media-wise, were definitely down compared to last year. And, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, the show is for us uh, media people to be able to go in, have our face on, because it's impossible. I don't think people understand how impossible it is to be able to sit down and talk to someone like Dion or Pete unless you're at the show. I mean, unless you're, like, in a good market, which, unfortunately, Austin's not the biggest poppin' cigar market, to get people into your local shops, you know? So it, it's the place where we all can kind of come together. But, um, no, I think it was well said, Coop. Yeah, let me add another point, because you guys had a, I mean, you guys with the video coverage, I mean, if you want, if folks want to really kind of get the vibe of that show, uh, the cigar... Federation coverage did that. 
My coverage was a little different. Okay, my coverage was very product centric. Not to say you guys didn't cover product, but mine was you were, very. You were working your balls off, brother. I mean, every time I turned around, you were like hunched over your laptop, typing furiously, food in one hand, like just <laughs> going to town every time I saw you. No, thanks. But but the approach I took, for example, when I got to Pete, when I got to see Pete, for example, and that's a great example, uh, even though another manufacturer came over and just rudely interrupted me during Pete, I said, Pete, I just need 15 minutes. Here's what here's the homework I've done before the show. Let's fill in a few of these gaps. And it was, it was bam, 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 and I was able to get through Pete Johnson in 15 minutes. There were other people like Dion who I hadn't had contact with that I needed a little more time with, and they were very accommodating with that. Um, Again, there was no one who, who made me feel, and I've been covering this show for five years, and I've had maybe one or two incidents over those five years of anyone just not wanting to deal with me. Um, and there were a couple of booths I visited this year which were not maybe the most social media friendly booths that I was received very well at. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, Absolutely. That, it, it yeah. was one of those things, I mean, I think that attendance was down. Like, and this is not a knock on the, the show or manufacturers at all, but you'd say, hey, okay, i got to go over to this booth because this person wanted me to come at three. Like, I'd have to leave wherever I was at at 2.30 to be able to walk across the trade show floor because I'd get stopped six different times um, by people because they, they, I mean, they were they want the interaction. They want the coverage. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think overall it was a great a great show. I mean, I think hats off to the IPCPR and, you know, hats off to all the media people that went and the manufacturer. I think overall it was a, it was a very successful show um, in terms of, you know, no 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 angry people, no, no flub-ups, no... Anything like that, I think overall is very successful. And they did it without a CEO for most of True. the year. I mean, yeah. you got to give them credit. They they did this without a state. They, they made a new CEO only a few weeks before the show, and he was just really out there on his first day on the job. So, mm -hmm. I mean, hats off to them. We, we I hear all the IPCP artists, IPCP that they put on a very good trade show, um, and they, they didn't have, like I said, a, a, a man at the top this year. It's true. It is now, true. what do you what do you think for next year, Coop? <clears throat> and just sort of spitballing out there, if you had a magic wand and you could wave wave your your Stogie Geeks Coop magic wand, what would you like to see changed for the media for for 2015? I really would like to. Obviously, I'd really like to see the credential media be the people to go, and I'd hate to exclude some of the brands that don't want to go, but I'd like to see IPCPR look to us and say, you know what? We, we have a good working relationship with the Scar Media Association. Um, we'll trust that those members, and we're not trying to vet who goes to the show, but we'll have a trust factor that these people um, are the people that go to the show. And if IPCPR wants to invite anyone else, it's their, it's their show, it's their choice. It just wouldn't be our problem if someone you know, you know, has it. So I'm hoping that kind of the good framework we laid this year we could take it a little further next year. I've heard some people advocating for uh, a boost to do the interviews with. I'm not sure I agree with that. Um, That'd be pretty tough. I think, and, and I think the the model is you, what you guys did is a good model. Hey, it can work. We're going around from boost to boost, so we no complaints. Um, and it gives you the vibe of the show. So I think you know there were some things that were put in this year, like you know they let us on the floor early, but no video cameras till 10:30. You know, so there's little things like that we may have to concede on, but I think in the end um, we we proved that I think a lot of the problems aren't necessarily. I mean, there there may be some rotten apples that spoiled it in the past. It, it's true. I mean, there there's definitely bad apples. I mean, and you know at the end of the day, you know uh, the site the the issue is I don't think we want to vet or exclude anyone and the funny thing is a lot of the people who you know have have an issue with, with CMA are the people that would get in anyways do you know yep. what I mean they're, they're not the people we give a shit about those aren't the people that we want to like eh, no, I just that, don't understand that, that's the funny thing is uh yeah I mean it's pretty much like I said there was one problem person this year and IPCBR has to take care of that problem person they let him they let this person back in and this person's had bad experiences in the past, and he was thrown out of more booths this year. So, yeah. Well, and as I, as I understand it, most of the drama came not from media people, but from guests who were invited by people who were attending the show that uh, that ended up causing issues. If I understand what happened there, is that is that your take? There were, you know, yeah, there was some. I think guests have always been a problem, but it, it's a very fine line, and you're I'm never sure. gonna because. People basically, here's the thing, the cigar industry uh, doesn't want to pay for it. <laughs> I'm sorry, cigar industry, but I'm going to say it. So they get people, to, they, get, they invite 
people to help them work the booths. That retailers invite people to help them do the buying, and yep. they have a role. They have a specific role. They're not just there with trick or treat bags, but sometimes they don't understand the the intricacies of, of how a trade show works. And then I put that back on either the manufacturer who brought them in or the retailer who brought them in. Um, so I haven't seen too many. There's a, there's always a few cases where there's a trick or treater that gets in with a manufacturer or retailer, but I think you have like I said this fine line where as long as you're gonna bring in this unpaid uh, um, indentured servitude, right? right. <laughs> the problem's not going to go away. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And if I brought in someone who wasn't part of Cigar Coop to hold the camera and stuff, I guarantee you uh, someone would find a way to, to, to cause cause a problem. I'm not saying anything, but someone would find a way to blame that person. So Just, just make sure they're Canadian and you won't have any problems. Yeah. <laughs> the first to apologize when needed. Yep, yep. So... I mean, and we've got four minutes, and we'll be wrapping it up. So, Cooper, we really appreciate it. I guess. Oh, in time. What give give everyone, you know, just kind of this year, this year in cigar, through August twelfth, two thousand fourteen. What do you just kind of give us what your thoughts are on this year from kind of everything? You know, IPCPR manufacturers, the FDA. I mean, what would you call it when you said, "Oh, two thousand fourteen was the year of the." What what would that be? 2014. Uh, all right, you're you're the Lancero. No, I don't agree with that. But I think the Lancero <laughs> was very much a boutique thing, and the it people was. came out with Lanceros for the most part were the people who are very close with their customer base, those small yep. companies. Um, I'd say this year, Domin the, the Dominican strikes back. The DR strikes back. I would agree. I would say it is the the re the resurgence of yeah. you know they have like the new American food. Yeah. It's like the resurgence of the new Dominican. And I'll be the first to admit I don't understand it. I'm not really digging it, but it is. It just like Surgeon said, it is the reemergence of a new Dominican. And it's not kind of the old classic style Dominican. It's definitely new. It's hip. I mean they've amped up their things a little bit. But, I mean, definitely, I mean, you look at Caldwell, you look at Jose Blanco, you look at, you know, a host of other people. It's Davidoff, definitely the research, yep. yeah, resurgence yeah. of, and, and I would say, I would do another thing, is I would say it's a resurgence of Dominican, but I would say it's also a lot of the bigger guys are going Nicaraguan. Like, I smoked the Cohiba Nicaragua the other day. I mean, I thought it was going to be crappy, and it honestly blew me what away. It's a freaking yeah. great cigar. Yeah. Freaking yeah, I mean, cigar. yeah, um, and I think there's things going on in Nicaragua right now, which may be changing the business model over there. And now suddenly you're seeing some people leave Nicaragua and go to the DR. I mean, so you, there's a lot of you know, there's just a lot of change going on in Nicaragua, and I think the big people are trying to get bigger in Nicaragua. I would agree. I mean, and, and so, I think yeah. no, I think you're right. I think a lot of people. I mean, Nicaragua is saturated. So, you know, anytime in business that happens, yeah, you know, either you're going to get big and you're going to dominate and you're going to you're going to win or you're going to get out. And I think that's what a lot of what's happening. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at what Robert Caldwell, if there's a comeback story of the year. I was just in Chattanooga and let me tell you Robert Caldwell's cigars were the talk of Chattanooga tweet up this year. The talk. Really? The cigar, they, they were they were definitely, I mean, I just that was the buzz. Yeah, they're Without putting out question. some pretty amazing cigars. Oh. Yes, I, I've been I've been happy with them. I've been happy. They're different. I liked it better than the Winwood stuff. Um, so you wouldn't have thought that, um, but it's made a big, it's made a big. And Davidoff just, you know, I was at the, you know, talking to Davidoff and their numbers. They're just really having good numbers. Um, you know, their numbers, their earnings are just really good right now. So they're in a very upswing right now. Interesting. So, 2014, you heard it here from Cigar Coop, the rebirth of Dominican. DR strikes back. DR yeah. strikes back. So, with that, everyone, we appreciate you guys watching the show tonight. Coop, really appreciate you coming on. Hey, thanks for the opportunity. Really appreciate it as well. Anytime, Always brother. Anytime. Surgeon, yeah, yeah. thanks for covering for my stupid sidekick. Always. Tune, Where, tune is, he? Where is Rob tonight? I don't know. 
he's working, working. Or, yeah, he's always whatever. But yeah, I think he's uh, a ball game. On, Rob. <laughs> I know, man. He's he's a bum. This but is the second time I've been on, and Rob hasn't. No, and I love Surgeon. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, it's the second time Rob hasn't been on. Maybe we need to talk to him about being hateful against you, Coop. I'm gonna have to <laughs> put his performance have have review. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> exactly. So. All right, guys. We well, appreciate you guys watching it out and checking out Cigar Federation or Cigar Chat on CigarFederation.com. Check us back Thursday, 7 p.m. Central. Well, excuse me, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll have Dean from Epic Cigars on. So, everyone, appreciate it. Have a great night, and look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday. Adios. Peace.